They made this thing even tinier. Third-party docks have always been a bit of a weird situation for the Switch, especially given the fact that when the Switch first came out, a whole lot of third-party docks that were being released end up frying a whole lot of different Switches. And as time has gone on, we have seen a couple of third-party options still available to this day that do seem to be pretty safe, one of which is Genki's Covert Dock. This was released back in 2020, and the main focus of this product was being a small, portable version of a Switch dock where it would just give you the necessary ports you would need, and you have a great on-the-go dock solution. Well, they've now also released the Covert Dock Mini, which is even tinier. Now, the thing about this is that this is not a replacement for the Covert Dock. This is not just a flat-out, smaller, upgraded version. There are some trade-offs going on with this, both that are upsides and some downsides. Uh, but I have to say, overall, if you're in the market for something like this, I really like this particular option, uh, even over the full-size Covert Dock, and we'll talk about why. Now, I do want to mention that while this is not a sponsored video, this is something that Genki sent me to try out. And actually, they sent me this alongside their new Waveform earbuds, which is something that I'm planning on covering as well. So if you want to find out more about those, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that future video. First off, let's just talk about the body of this thing and the port situation. Uh, this is half the size of the Covert Dock, which is already a lot smaller than a traditional dock design. Part of this trimmed down design is that this is, in and of itself, the wall outlet. This is what you're plugging directly into the wall. You're not leaning any cable into a power Supply, so that is an important aspect of how you can incorporate this into setups. Uh, and one big difference between this one and the regular Covert Dock is it is down a single port. Uh, the full-size Covert Dock offered an HDMI port, a USB-C port, and an additional USB-A port that could be used for a number of different Switch accessories, whereas the Mini only has that HDMI and USB-C. So this is the USB-C port that you're going to plug the Switch or other device into, which we'll talk about in a second, whereas the HDMI out is obviously what you're going to plug into your TV or display of choice. Now, depending on what you want to use this for, the loss of that USB-A port can be a pretty big deal. Uh, there were a lot of different use cases you could have for that, whether you wanted to support using the Ethernet adapter that was made for the Switch, if you wanted to plug in certain wired USB controllers, if you wanted to make use of the GameCube adapters, you could use a GameCube controller for certain games. Those are all functionalities that are effectively lost on this one because you only have these two ports to work with. And while it is something that is missed, in my mind, for what I like to use this for, it's an acceptable loss. If your goal for this is to have a very low key dock situation and you want to still have a fully functional switch setup, yes, the full size cover dock with the USB-A is going to be more important. But if your main goal with this is just having a portable solution to be able to quickly hook up a switch or other device to a TV on a go when you're traveling, which is really the main use I have for these, this gets the job done perfectly unless you really care about using certain wired controllers. One important thing to point out about the USB-C port, and this is true for both the Cooper Dock and this mini one, is that for the cable, you wanna make sure you use a 3.1 USB-C cable in order to support video out. Now this does ship with one of those cables, so you're able to make use of that right away. But if you ever lose that, or you wanna get a different one because you want a different length, you have to make sure you're getting the right kind of cable, otherwise, not gonna work. Now there are some internal changes to this device as well that you can't exactly see on the surface. Uh, the two big ones being the fact that it does supply a lower amount of power compared to the covert dock so it is going to charge nintendo switch or any other device you use with it more slowly but on the flip side one of the upsides to this is that this actually also supports 4k out which the regular covert dock does not now obviously the big thing this has been pushed for is nintendo switch where 4k out doesn't really matter. The Switch taps out at 1080p while docked, and that's it. Uh, where this ends up coming in handy, though, is that while the Switch has been what this is heavily marketed for, that's not the only device you can use this with. And that's actually a large part of why I wanted to talk about one of these again, is because I think the use case for these has expanded significantly due to some new devices that have come out, namely the Steam Deck. While this is still a great fit for the Switch, being able to use this with Steam Deck as well is a really interesting situation, especially when you figure in how it differs a little bit from more traditional dock setups. Namely the fact that it gives you a really interesting weird way of still using the Steam Deck as your controller while it's hooked up to the TV setup of your choice. Now given part of the limitation of this setup is that you are limited by the length of the USB cable, uh, you need to really pick a good midpoint between where you want this thing plugged into power and then have enough length on the HDMI to plug into the display of your choice and then also plug into the Steam Deck itself. But it's a really interesting setup of being able to have the gameplay on the display in front of you and you're still holding and using the Steam Deck 
as a controller rather than placing it down on a dock where you have to leave it there stationary and then rely on a controller to plug in or connect wirelessly to. Now, given that might still be a preference in terms of wanting to use one of those kind of wireless controllers, and I think there are merits to that kind of setup more so, especially as your sort of permanent main setup. But as a way to just kind of quickly throw together a way of getting this on a larger screen and play, it's a really neat solution. You know, when I covered the original Covert Dock, one of the things I talked about is that I wanted to continually use it to make sure that, you know, if I ever did have problems with my Switch with it, I would let people know because, yeah, there's still that very much constant fear of third-party docks combined with Switch. And to be perfectly honest, while I have continually used it, it is something that's been used in more select cases. I still rely on a traditional dock for my at-home setups, and really the main time the Covert Dock shines and is something that I really think to use is travel situations. There is something about the traditional dock setup that I just really like a lot more for my main TV. The idea of just dropping your switch into the dock and then lifting the Joy-Cons or grabbing a wireless controller of your preference. It's just something that's a little more seamless to me than having to find and grab the USB-C cable that's plugged into the wall and then hook that into my system. But again, that's why I don't really use this for a primary setup. But the idea that I can walk around and travel with this in my pocket or keep the relevant cables in a small bag is I think actually an even better fit for the way I use it. Now, Genki themselves do list a couple other uses you could use this for, like with the gaming laptops or MacBooks, and those are valid cases, but there are lots of other ways you can kind of rig that setup going. What I really do like this for is the handheld gaming setup that you can also do to a TV that the Switch and the Steam Deck really emphasize. Now, one thing worth noting for the Steam Deck example in particular is that the power draw on this is not quite enough to really keep the Steam Deck fully fed. You are going to get the warning from the Steam Deck that it is just pulling from a lower charger. And so while you can use this for that kind of docked gameplay setup, it's not something that's going to work for a, you know, infinite amount of time as long as you have power. You're actually going to be very slowly draining the battery as you play. So that is an important distinction between this and using a more traditional dock designed for the Steam Deck in mind. Which really goes back to the main point I was making earlier about how, you know, there are more traditional docks that I think you want to use in main setups, but this is an awesome secondary choice for more situational times. In summary, I think this thing is cool and honestly, I'm a bigger fan of this than the regular Covert Dock. The regular Covert Dock is again, very neat if there is some additional stuff you wanna be able to plug in all at once, whether that's using an ethernet adapter or a wired controller. Uh, but for the main kind of concept, for the easy, simple, on the go setup, smaller size and lower price point of this is I think, a lot more enticing. So those are my thoughts on the Genki Covert Mini Dock. Uh, again, I'm also planning on covering the waveform really soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Uh, if you're interested in grabbing one of these, I do have a link posted down below in the description as well. As always, if you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button to let me know, and I will see you guys later.